Now before we can look at chemical reactions involved in um, photosynthesis and metabolism and respiration, we need to understand a few things about the behavior of energy. So I'm going to start with these two concepts you should understand. There's this idea of there being some kind of order or structure to things, and order gradually winds down if not controlled and leads to entropy. And a classic example of this would be if, if you don't clean up your room, if you just leave things and don't expend any energy, eventually you're going to have books and clothes on the floor, your bed will get messed up, there might be dust and stuff like that. And so you've gone from order into a state of entropy or disorder. Now if you want to expend some energy, you can start folding things, putting, folding up your clothes, putting things back in the drawer. Maybe you sweep or vacuum or dust the furniture and you get more order in your bedroom. In order to do that, you have to expend some energy. Another example would be a tree that's absorbing light from the sun and photosynthesis takes place. And in this case, energy, the light from the sun is being absorbed, so energy is absorbed. And the result is that this energy is used to turn carbo carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere and water and other basic elements into leaves and cells and carbohydrates for the plants. And so the energy is being absorbed. Now, if there's a forest fire, the tree, of course, burns down. In this case, you've got entropy, this orderly structure that's living called a tree just becomes a bunch of ashes and CO2 and other, other um, less orderly products. And, of course, energy is released at the same time. So energy is released in the form of light and heat, other no all otherwise known as fire. So generally, energy is released, and things a system becomes less complex, and that's called entropy. The opposite side of the equation is when a, a system is absorbing energy and there's more order in the system, that um, leads to more order. Now there's a formula for following this in a living system that was developed by a professor named Willard Gibbs. So there's a change in free energy, it's so that's a change in energy, and there's a formula for calculating this change in energy. The form is delta H, where H is the total energy of a system. And when we say system, we're talking about a system could be as simple as a single chemical reaction, like turning an ADP molecule into an ATP molecule. And so this change in energy is the total energy of the system minus the effects of a chemical reaction. Now T refers to temperature, and delta S refers to the change in entropy. So if there's an increase in, ener in entropy, or more chaos, delta S is going to be higher, and this overall number is going to be lower. If there's less entropy, that is, there's order, then delta S will be a lower number, and this whole overall number will be higher. So now you've got two possible situations. If delta G, or the change in energy, is positive, that is, if delta G is greater than zero, that means we've absorbed some energy into the system, because the total energy has increased. So there's been an absorption of energy, absorbed energy, and usually there's more order taking place, so that there's been a, an increase in order and an absorption of energy and increase in the total energy. If delta G is negative, that means if delta G is less than zero, then that means there's been a net release of energy, a, a loss of energy to the system. So energy released, released, and there's been entropy. And now this energy released, it could just be energy that's lost as heat, but oftentimes in a biological system this energy is released in order to do some other kind of work. And of course released energy do is free energy to do work for us. So both of these processes are important. got a carbohydrate, C6H12O6. Um, it's got a certain amount of energy. When it oxidizes, it becomes six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. And there's a net loss of, of energy from the system, because the CO2 and the water contain less energy than the carbohydrate did. So you've got a negative delta G. Delta G is negative. And this energy is released in the form of heat, or more often in living systems, this energy is released in order to create ATP. So it leads to this reaction where ADP 
right, ADP is turned into ATP. And so in this case, in this type of reaction, ADP turning into ATP, energy is absorbed. So there's a positive change in the free energy, positive delta G. The system has absorbed energy, and so now the ADP is returned to ATP. Now again, this ATP breaks down and does some work. So ATP gets broken down into ADP. Um, and what happens is you've got a negative, because the, the system has lost energy, so negative delta G. And the energy is released usually to do some kind of work in the case of a cell. If you've got delta G, a change in, in the free energy that's negative, so negative delta G, energy is released, and so we call that an exergonic reaction. Exergonic means a release of energy. It's an, it, the energy goes outside of the system. It's exer. And so if we have a positive delta G, you can probably guess, energy goes into the system. It is endogonic. Is it endogonic? Endergonic. So endo means inside. So we've got an, I'm sorry, endergonic reaction. Let me erase that there. Endo or end refers to inside. So endergonic. End means inside because the energy is going into the system. So that's all you need to know to understand how, how respiration, photosynthesis, and many other processes of, of life take place. So now that you understand the basic behavior of energy, we can get into the details of glycolysis and fermentation and a bunch of other interesting forms of biochemistry. So enjoy. Thanks for listening.